In this segment, we're going to tie a beadhead pheasant tail nymph. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite flies. It's very easy to tie, and at least in my little section of the world here in Pennsylvania, it's definitely the go-to fly. It's a very productive pattern. And the concepts that we're going to illustrate with this fly are, one, adding a bead head to a fly, which is another way of adding weight to the fly, and two, the concept of counter wrapping, which I'll explain more in detail when we get to it. Now you'll notice that I have the hook oriented in the vise in a vertical position, and I've done that to allow me to apply my bead a little more easily uh, to the hook. Now this is a typical fly tying bead, and fly tying beads differ from conventional craft type beads in the fact that the hole that is drilled within the bead is countersunk. You'll notice that one side has a hole that's a little smaller in diameter, and if I flip this over to show you the other side, you'll notice that the hole is a little bigger. Now you want to apply the bead with the small side of the hole first. You're going to drop the bead onto the hook with the small side of the hole, and that way when the bead wraps around the hook up to the eye, the smaller diameter hole will be facing the eye of the hook, so it'll prevent you from crowding the eye of the hook, and the wider side, the wider, the larger diameter hole will be facing the rear of the hook, which will allow you to apply some additional material and thread wraps um, to secure that bead in place and finish off your fly. So we're going to take our bead, smaller diameter hole facing down, held in our tweezers here, and we're going to drop that right over the point of the hook. Now we're going to take the, the hook by the point, remove it from the vise, and simply flip the hook over, and you'll see that the bead will slide right up to the eye of the hook, right in place where we want it. So that's how to apply a bead head. Now let's put our hook back in the vise in the conventional position and tie our thread onto the hook. And we're going to create a thread base all the way back to the bend of the hook. Okay, clip your tag end off. And a few more wraps to bring you right back to the bend. Now we're going to take a pheasant tail and we're going to add a tail to the fly. Now the way to do this is you're going to take your, your fibers, the fibers of the pheasant tail, and you're going to stroke them out perpendicular to the quill. That'll help to line the tips up and for the tail you only need a few fibers, maybe maybe four or five. So that looks about good. So let's come in here and trim off our bunch. And we're going to add our tail to the fly. Now your tail should be roughly half the length of the hook. And you secure it in with a few pin traps. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we're going to continue to wrap the rest of that material, bind it right onto the hook, bring it right up to the, just about to the eye of the hook, and then come in and trim off your excess. Now we're going to add a piece of copper wire. So you're going to hold your copper wire under the hook on about a 45 degree angle, bring your thread up, trap that into place, make two or three loose wraps, and then pull that wire back along the shank of the hook, until the tip of that wire sinks just about under those thread wraps. So you're behind the bead and your wire is secured under your thread. And you're going to bind that now back down to the bend of the hook. All right. Now we're going to make our body of this fly. And the body is, again, just pheasant tail fibers. So let's pull off a few more, maybe six or seven this time, a few more fibers, a small bunch. Again, stroke them up so that they're perpendicular so you can get in there to cut them off. Come in with your scissors and clip your bunch off. And you're going to tie these in by their tips right at the bend of the hook. So stroke them out and pinch wrap them into place. Now for making the body, you want to try to get some fibers that are a little bit longer because you're going to wrap these around the shank of the hook. So you're going to appreciate having that length to your fibers. It'll make binding your or wrapping your body a little bit easier. Okay? So we'll bring our thread up to a point about a quarter to a third of the way back from the eye of the hook. 
and now we're going to just wrap our fibers. Now the way I like to do this is stroke these up, wrap them around, take your finger and just kind of pinch and roll them over. I'm going to wrap them in more or less touching turns. They can overlap a little bit. That's okay. And just pinch them right around. And that way if you kind of lose your grip as you're trying to wrap, especially if you have some shorter fibers and uh, your fingers maybe slip off of the fibers, if you're pinching with the finger of your left hand here, you won't unravel the whole body if you happen to slip, if your grip happens to slip. So we'll bring those up, wrap about two-thirds up the way of the hook, and you're going to bind these off. A couple of wraps to secure them down, and clip them off out of the way. And we'll make a few more wraps here just to bind this down a little bit tighter. Wrap up to the eye maybe and back to that point again. Okay, now we're going to counter wrap our copper wire. Now, the general rule of fly tying is that you wrap away from yourself. With counter wrapping, you're going to intentionally break that rule and you're going to wrap the wire toward yourself. And we're going to do this in spiral turns to make a rib on the fly. Now what this does is pheasant tail fibers generally tend to be a little bit on the fragile side. As I counter wrap, I'm crossing those fibers and trapping them a little more securely down on the shank of the hook. So that'll reinforce my body, it'll reinforce these pheasant tail fibers, and just give you a little more durable of a fly. So a couple of wraps to secure that off there. And then you can come in with scissors and cut this off, or if your wire is thin enough, if you just work it a little bit, just grab it, it'll just kind of ping right out of the way. So that's the concept of counter wrapping, and that's why you do it, generally to reinforce your material uh, and add a little bit of durability to your fly. And we're going to add a wing case onto this, the same way that we did with the hare's ear nymph, again using pheasant tail fibers, and this time you're going to pinch off a bunch of eh, about a dozen, maybe 10 or 12 fibers, I think I'll take this whole bunch right here. And again, you're going to come in, stroke them out, secure them, clip them off with your scissors, and again, flip them over. You're going to tie them in by the points, or with the points facing forward anyway. And you're going to pinch wrap those and attach them right on the top of the hook. A couple of wraps to secure them down. And then this will be folded over to form a wing case in just a moment. Let's get these butt ends out of the way here. And we're going to bind those loose ends down and get them nice and firm. And I'm going to wrap them up to the right behind the bead here. And now we're going to make a thorax that's going to consist of peacock curl. So you're going to make a loop of thread. Hold your finger out, make a loop of thread. And you're going to bind both ends of that loop down along the shank of the hook, the same way that we did when we tied the peacock and partridge. Come in with your scissors, clip off one end of that loop, and now you have a tag end of thread that you're going to use to reinforce your peacock curl. And we'll take about five or six strands of peacock curl, line them up as best as you can, and then just come in with your scissors and snip the tips off so that you have a nice even they have nice even ends there that you can bind down. And you're going to bind those down to the hook. Right about here. Okay. Now you're going to grab your peacock curl and your thread tag and hold them up straight. Grasp all that material together, hold it up straight, and you're going to spin it into a rope. And you're going to wrap your thorax. You can wrap forward in touching turns. Now I generally tend to like the thoraxes of my nymphs to be pretty meaty, so what I'll do is I'll wrap forward to the bead, and then I'll make almost like an X wrap. I'll, I'll wrap in an X fashion back over top of the wraps that I just made, and then bring them back forward, and that adds just a little bit of bulk to my thorax. 
and you make enough wraps until you're satisfied with the silhouette of your fly. And that looks pretty good there. And you're going to come in and you're going to tie those off right behind the bead. A couple of wraps to secure it. Clip off your excess. Get my thread out of there. There we go. Now take your wing case material and you're just going to pull that forward over the thorax and bind that down as well. Two, maybe three or four wraps. You can do a wrap in front, one or two wraps to kind of lock it into place. I don't know if you necessarily need to, but it's not going to hurt. Tip off your, clip off your excess. And now we come in with our whip finisher. And we whip finish and make our final knot. One, two, three, four and five and lance off your thread add a drop of glue in there and your bead head pheasant tail is all set to go